My name is Mario Mohammed, and for 32 years I was the most hated villain in professional wrestling. I am the Sultan of Sicily, the Italian Sheik. That's right, baby. I am a former Mid-Atlantic World Champion. No one better was better than the Sheik, baby. Nobody. Tell us about your time in Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. Oh, I was a big star. I was bigger than Mr. T and Big Bird. Women threw themselves at me. Lonely housewives, bus drivers, gas station attendants, even women on death row. Tell us how you became the Mid-Atlantic World Champion. Oh, that's a crazy story. I wasn't even supposed to be world champion. It started with the greatest feud in wrestling history, USA versus Italy. Ladies and gentlemen, wrestling fans of all ages, it's Hype Man Harold here, here to bring you the news about the Beantown Brawl. It's making a lot of noise, there's a big splash in Hollywood. The celebrities, the politicians, they're all casting their votes on who's going to win between Ricky Rebel and the Italian Sheik. here and there's a lot of things about America that I do not like I do not like uh, MTV I do not like uh, the uh, Michael Jackson or the uh, Mr. T what I like is people from my country from the old country from the old school this man right here he's an FBI full-blooded Italian he came to America with a dream he was raised and adopted by Middle Eastern parents and that's why he, he broadcasts, he represents two cultures, Italy and Iran. This right here, the number one wrestler of all professional wrestling, the Sultan of Sicily, the Las Guido of Afghanistan, the Ayatollah of Italy, the Italian Sheik. We're coming for you, Rocky Ricky Rebel. We're coming for you, Rocky Ricky Rebel. In two weeks, the next world heavyweight champion will be the Italian Sheik. The Italian Sheik. Hey everybody, it's Rockin' Ricky Rebel, and in two weeks I put my belt on the line against the Italian Sheik, and I'm gonna beat him, baby. One, two, three. I didn't come here to argue. I didn't come here to play. I came here to rock and roll all night and rock and roll all day. Woo! Good evening, folks. Hype Man Harold here, and we're here with an exclusive interview with our champion and our challenger for the Beantown Brawl on May 16th. Let's first hear from the challenger, the Italian Sheik. Ricky Rebel, I'm going to break your arms and your legs and your heart the same way that Van Halen did when they replaced David Lee Roth with that Sammy Hagar. Hey, let me tell you something, Sheiky. Nobody talks to Ricky Rebel like that. And in two weeks at the pay-per-view with the Big Town Brawl, I'm going to send your butt back to Baghdad, Daddy, yo. Woo! Ricky, you and your little rebels are nothing but punks. You know what, man? The only thing I've ever liked about Italy was the French woman and the French fries. That doesn't even make any sense. See, guy, mentally up here, I'm already beating. Yes, by being stupid with the wrong information and facts. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm gentlemen, the champ, gentlemen, baby. Gentlemen, I'm the gentlemen, champ. Gentlemen! Ladies and gentlemen, this rivalry is heating up. Two weeks. Beantown Brawl. Don't forget to order it on pay-per-view. Only $89.99. We'll see you there. My name is Dusty McGurk. My father was a promoter. His father was a promoter. His father's father was a promoter. My grandmother was a promoter. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I come from a long line of shady, shady people. So it all started when I get this frantic call from Crazy Steve. Now, Crazy Steve, he's a local drug dealer down in Boston. And he's going on and on that he ran into... Good time Gertrude, everyone's favorite ring rat. 
and that she's saying that she's going to tell Ricky Rebel that she's pregnant. Not only is she pregnant, but that he's the father. So what did you do? Well, the first thing I do, I give a call to Ricky's room. Ricky doesn't answer. So I know Ricky's out partying. If Ricky's not in the ring, he's partying. So then I get on the phone and I call the Italian Sheik. I tell him he needs to get a hold of Ricky Rebel, get him sobered up, and give me a call back. So when I finally get the call back from Italian Sheik, I tell the guys to stay in the hotel, get Ricky sobered up, I'm going to get down there, we're going to meet, we're going to have a little discussion on how we can maintain the integrity of this match and avoid any scandals attached to my promotion. Did you have any scandals in the past? I mean, I get a lot of flack because I booked Alien Boy to go over uh, Tokyo Leprechaun in under two minutes, but it's midget wrestling, who cares? I mean, it's the 80s. Everyone's partying, everyone's drinking, everyone's doing drugs. You name it, we're doing it. If a bar fight broke out, if somebody gets caught with some blow, if there's a DUI, I throw a little money around, all's forgotten. I mean, this is the 80s, man. It was a better time. But there's one thing that even money can't fix. One thing that can end a man's career worse than anything is a woman. And worse than a woman, a low-down, dirty ring rat. Hey everybody, I'm Rockin' Ricky Rebel, the American rebel without a cause, woo! And I was the former Mid-Atlantic World Champion back in the 80s, brother. Hey, it was an awesome time, brother. Hey, we had girls, the gold, and the story that will be told, man. That's right, I was bigger than Webster and Ricky Schroeder, woo! Can you tell us about your feud with the Italian Sheik? I wish I could, brother. I don't remember a damn thing. I was pretty wasted back in the day, if you know what I mean. Uh, I know the uh, the sheik came to my hotel room, and uh, then he said something about a phone call from Gus, and that I would have to lose the title and then go hiding for two months. What did you do in those three months? I partied my ass off, man. <laughs> but 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 you kids at home don't do that, all right? It's wrong. And it was the 80s. Woo! Look, I was so big in the 80s, I had my own action figure. Look, there was only 10 made. They, they just flew off the shelves. I couldn't believe it. Hello, my name is Jimmy Bump. I was a referee in the 80s, and I'm here today to tell you what I remember about Ricky Rebel's planned match with the Italian Sheik. Can you tell us what happened? Yeah, easily. Ricky messed with the wrong woman. Everyone knows to stay away from good time Gertrude. I got a call from Mario. And I thought it was going to be him telling me that Gus forgot to pay him again or that Ricky destroyed another hotel room. He told me he got a call from Crazy Steve and that basically we might have a scandal on our hands if Ricky makes it to the show in Boston. Listen, they were just rumors. I wasn't going to tell Ricky Rubble I was pregnant. You can't believe everything you hear from Crazy Steve. Why do you think they call him Crazy Steve? Because he's crazy.
So, Gus calls a meeting. He wanted Ricky to calm down from the news and from whatever the heck else he was on, and we discussed what to do. He came up with a plan to have an impromptu parking lot match. And I would win the title, and we would get Ricky out of town, and then I would defend the belt against the uh, superior gladiator at the Bean Town Brawl. So Gus has a referee and a cameraman meet us in the alley to set up the title switch, so we could uh, show it on TV before the brawl. I was beating Ricky. It's a win for Italy and Afghanistan. Oh, my mother was so proud. Uh, when I told her, she even baked me a cake. But I think that Tokyo leprechaun ate it all. He's a sneaky little bastard. Oh, uh, can I say bastard? Well, you, 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 you kind of just did. Tokyo leprechaun, you owe me a cake. And I know you stole my Mr. Potato Head out of my gym bag. Uh... Um, well, he's called, uh, Potato Head now. Uh, he's gender neutral. Uh, I don't know what that means, but in the 80s, he only had one gender. Poor b****. Can you tell us about Ricky's replacement for the Beantown Brawl? See, this is where I had to swallow my pride, a buttload of pills, and call a man that I swore that I would never do business with again. The superior gladiator. You don't have to do the interview in character. You can be yourself. Character? Character, you think I am in character? This is the real me. Ever since I was a little gladiator, this is how I talk. <gasps> this is how I walk. This is how I paint my face. And so the gladiators must know that the power of the superior gladiator is more powerful than you. And them, and all of them, the title is in my destiny. For it is written, and so it shall come to pass. That the gladiator become shall be on. <laughs> on an unrelated side note, can I ask you why you charged $89 for a one match pay per view? Are you questioning the integrity of me, Gussie McGurk, when it comes to pricing out pay per views? Listen. A lot goes into this. They're not just getting one match. They are getting three hour pre-show. All right? They need that kind of time. I need them to be going to concession stand. That's 10% for me. I need them going to the merch table. That's another 20% to me. I need them getting them Ricky Rebel versus the Italian Chic t-shirts. That's money for me. But it's not just about me. I gotta pay the boys. I gotta pay the boys. You know, you know how much it costs to have Alien Boy come from Mars just for a pay-per-view? It's astronomical, literally. Ugh, we just wanted to party, man. We had chicks in every town waiting for us. But I was mad for a while. Why were you mad? Well, the continental breakfast they had at the hotel sucked. The toast, hot as a rock. And the pancakes were colder than my mother at Christmas time. Hey yo! Alien Boy had promised to go down to the hotel bar and pick up two chicks so he could, you know, have some fun. That damn alien met two chicks and then brought them up to his room for himself while I'm stuck watching Golden Girls reruns in my room.
So we get to the parking lot match. Jimmy Bump just so happens to be there. I said I'll put the belt on the line right now. Sheik says he wants the belt on the line right now. So then Jimmy makes this ascension match. Sheik goes, gives me a thumb to the eye, and then that tricky Sultan of Sicily takes out a fireball and he blows my face! Burning me, man! It hurt like hell! No pun intended. Then the Sheik goes to cover me, and he goes to make the three count. One, two, and then three. Sheik then wins the match. He becomes the new Mid-Atlantic Pro World Heavyweight Champion. That's how we solve this, man. So Jimmy gives him the belt. Sheik's the new champion. And now he goes into the Beantown Brawl as the champion, and I get out of here. And that's how it all went down, as far as I can remember. Were you expecting to see Ricky defend the title against the Sheik in Boston? Yeah, everybody did. It was all over the news. I don't know why he had that weird parking lot match with the Sheik instead. Listen, the boys get lonely out on the road, and I want to make them feel a little more at home. I do their laundry, I rub their feet, I shave their back hair, and if all goes well, we have a little fun under the covers. I was never trying to extort nobody for no money. I swear, I am a good girl. That's why they call me Good Time Gertrude. What happened after the Beantown Brawl? Oh, I was happy. I was on cloud nine, and then... I saw Gertrude when I was leaving the arena. She tells me she was pregnant. Oh man, I was scared. I ran out of there faster than the roadrunner going for the Wiley Coyote. What do you remember about the Beantown Brawl? So Gus calls me and he tells me what's going on with Good Time Gertrude. He tells me I need to pick up Superior Gladiator from the airport. And I would rather jump off the Empire State Building, then be in a car with that lunatic. Was he that bad? Was he that bad? Most performer, wrestlers are performers. And they, when they leave the ring, when they walk through that curtain, they turn it off. Not Spirit Gladiator. That man lived the gimmick. He would be in the Wendy's drive-thru, and he'd be going on and on about the galaxy, the stars, existential crisis. All he wanted was a milkshake. Hmm. Not just today, but for every day. For every day. The Superior Gladiator. How is life going right now? Oh, it's fantastic. I have my own psychic reading company. In fact, people call me all the time to ask about their future. So, I just tell them whatever pops into my head. It's easy money for the Sheiky baby. Uh, but I don't have a crystal ball, but I do have this magic futuristic turtle. It's all about the money. No, uh, when, uh, when we'd hook up with chicks, cause it was the 80s, you know, it's like anything goes, you know, no rules, nothing. This referee don't mean nothing, cause they ain't no rules. They, these ladies, they pinned me down. They were all professional wrestlers too. Ripped, absolutely shredded. They pinned me down. I'd say, oh, I'm tapping out, one, two, three. They didn't care, and neither did I. Cause it was the 80s, you know, we, we like to party, that's what we did, you know, but it takes a toll in the future, you know? I I can't taste anything anymore. Every receptor in my nose and my mouth numb to flavor. My wife baked me a beautiful looking cake for my birthday, ate the entire thing. 
I had no idea what it tasted like. She could have given me a plate of and have eaten it. I didn't care. Now, Alien Boy, this, this guy was just weird. Never talked, walked around looking all creepy. He'd stare you down. He didn't blink. He did this one move one time. He called it the probe. Disgusting. Absolutely heinous. A week after that, we started sexual misconduct meetings for the workplace. No fun at all. Well, I'll be honest with you. Uh, a lot of people like Betty White. That's their favorite golden girl, you know me. I'm a B. Arthur type of man. You know, she just did something for me. She was strong. She, lo she looked like she could handle herself. And that's something Betty was too frail for me. B, though. Oh, you could take me down anytime, honey. Good lord.